The skull is small, that of a child, one of our early ancestors. What's remarkable, it has traits of both Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. The jawbone, more Neanderthal. The skull, a mix. There's a lot of traits of Homo sapiens in this skull. We can see from the blood vessels that it's a bit of a mosaic, it's called. It's a mixture of traits. The skull was discovered in a cave in what was then British-ruled Palestine almost 100 years ago. Advanced research found something extraordinary, that interbreeding began much earlier than first thought. Our evolutionary tree is not as simple as we often think. Humans and chimpanzees diverged more than six million years ago. Early hominins evolved to early humans. Three million years ago, there were first stone tools. There are other branches all the way to about 300,000 years ago, when Neanderthals and then Homo sapiens emerged, the modern human. Homo sapiens existed in Africa, Neanderthals in parts of Europe and Asia. Then Homo sapiens began to migrate out of Africa. And about 40,000 years ago, Neanderthals disappeared. Before they went extinct, there was interbreeding. But for how long? This early fossil suggests interbreeding lasted up to 100,000 years. Evidence Homo sapiens didn't just try to wipe out Neanderthals. Homo sapiens was not a violent species at all because he managed to live side by side with Neanderthals for a very long period of time. Neanderthals were more isolated and less able to cope with change, from disease to environmental factors. Longer interbreeding lends weight to two populations gradually becoming one. Maybe they were just absorbed into our population uh, through these, these uh, acts of interbreeding. Enough interaction between the two groups to, to become uh, one, one big population over time. The fossil is believed to be that of a five-year-old. Paleontologists and archaeologists gaining new insights from a child into how our ancestors evolved. Eric Sorensen, Global News, Toronto.